Welcome in to Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, spring training is finally here. Well, for some teams, the Phillies will be there in a couple days, but we'll break down what we're going to be covering in spring training. And it's a very special Valentine's Day episode of Locked On Phillies. <laughs> Locked on Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I am your host, Connor Thomas, and it is Valentine's Day 2023, February 14th. I want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day out there. From me here at Locked On Phillies, appreciate you following. Uh, you guys are all my Valentine for 2023, so I appreciate you so much, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day, even on this holiday. We really appreciate that. We're available wherever you get your podcast, YouTube, Odyssey app, all that good stuff. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, make every moment more. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets. Win or lose, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. All right. Spring training is finally here for a couple teams across Major League Baseball. The Phillies don't have pitchers and catchers report for another I never know how to do this, however many days. If you count today, if you count tomorrow and the day of the 16th. Today's the 14th. The pitchers and catchers report coming up on the 16th. So you'll see guys down there in Clearwater, and you'll get everything uh, going in that front. <coughs> Excuse me. If my voice sounds hoarse today, it's the same reason that we did not have an episode yesterday. We are back to five episodes a week. Yesterday, I was very much in mourning. I still am. Following the Eagles losing the Super Bowl and the Phillies, uh, well, not the Phillies, but Philadelphia's loss of a third straight major North American championship in like four months. The uh, Union lost the MLS Cup. The Phillies lost the World Series and the Eagles lost the Super Bowl. So it's just been um, it wasn't great. And I was yelling at the TV a lot and I was saying a lot of words that I won't repeat on here. And I was very unhappy, like if you're an Eagles fan out there like you were as well. So. Yeah, just still still fighting off um, four quarters worth of screaming at the TV and then cursing every referee's name in existence and losing my mind. Whole nother conversation, not for this podcast. But if you hear me like coughing at some point, that's why. Anyway, let's jump back into it. Yeah, the Phillies are a couple days away from pitchers and catchers reporting. So that means, yes, spring training is here. And a couple other teams already have pitchers and players down there or out there in Arizona if you're one of those West Coast teams that ends up in Arizona for spring training. Of course, the Phillies are going to be in Clearwater, Florida, and they'll uh, they'll open camp in earnest later this week. So we're right there. We made it. What does that mean for Locked On Phillies? Well, first of all, what it means is we're back to five episodes a week. So today's Tuesday. You get Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week, and every other week for the rest of the season, you got Monday through Friday, unless I have some stuff come up or whatever, and I have to shift some episodes around. If you've been following the show long enough, you know how that works, but Five episodes a week, which means even more content, which means even deeper breakdowns, which means you're really, really going to get to know the 2023 Philadelphia Phillies very, very well as we progress through what's going to be an exciting season. But before you get to the season, of course, you got to get to the preseason. And we had a little uh, little locked on meeting earlier today, and we talked through some stuff as a uh, channel, so all the locked on uh, accounts and everything. And there's some great things that we've all decided to do both as a group and myself on Locked on Phillies as an individual show as we get ready for the regular season and cover all the topics you're going to want to know about your team, the Philadelphia Phillies. So here are just some things you can expect in no particular order, uh, but things that you could expect as we go through spring training. First of all, we are going to talk World Baseball Classic because the Phillies have a lot of players in it. I know it's not technically Philadelphia Phillies related. I will have your updates on everything going on in the World Baseball Classic that's Phillies-related. So, like, how did JT Romuto do for Team USA? Uh, like, how did Taiwan Walker throw? How did Sir Anthony Dominguez throw? Like, stuff like that. So, we're going to be going ahead and looking through the World Baseball Classic stuff as it affects the Philadelphia Phillies to get an idea of how our players are playing. How does Trey Turner look? Like, everything in there will be uh, will be factored in. So, that's, that's the first one. Again, these are not in order of uh, – they're not in chronological order of how I'm going to hit them as we go through spring training. Just running down a list that I had uh, based on our meeting 
this morning. We're going to talk position battles. Now, the Philadelphia Phillies don't have many, but the ones they do have are very interesting, and they're ones that are really going to affect the well-roundedness of this roster. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday, and you already know Wednesdays are going to be our opening day roster projection days. I've already gotten some pushback from some people over at 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio where I work my full-time job. Uh, other people that cover the Phillies that I talk to relatively often about my initial roster projection. So I, am I going to cave to them, and am I going to change it? I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out tomorrow. But we'll have continued roster projection shows every Wednesday. And position battles we're going to hit in earnest with full shows devoted to some of the more interesting positions that are up for grabs for the Philadelphia Phillies. Some huge team storylines are going to be common themes throughout the spring training set. So a little bit over a month's worth of spring training. You're going to be looking at things like fifth spot in the rotation of the big one. It crosses over with the position battles a little bit. Outfield depth. Um, when can we expect Bryce Harper? Do we get any update on that? Who's going to have a bounce back year? Who's going to have a regression year? Who's going to play well in a contract year? Who's not going to play well in a contract year? There's a whole bunch of different storylines that poise this team. And then also storylines from outside the Phillies. Who's good in the division again? Who's good in the league? Who's good in the American League considering you play everybody this year? A lot of interesting team storylines. Oh, yeah. Speaking of who's good and who they're going to play, we're going to have schedule breakdowns. As we get deeper into spring training and everything, There'll be days where guys, you kind of already have an idea. Okay, George is going to look like this. Ramiro's going to look like that. And they're going to be, uh, of course, you got the World Baseball Classic that messes with all of that. But still, there are going to be slow days during spring training as well, despite the team playing pretty often or parts of the team playing relatively often. But so we're going to look at the schedule. Very interesting one this year. Very unique setup, in Major League Baseball, and very, uh, very nuanced changes. Now, there's the major changes you're going to play every team in baseball. So it cuts down the amount of division games you play in 2023. It's the first year they do that. But there are also interesting things that change as a result of that change, some ancillary changes that are interesting points of the schedule that we'll point to. We're going to look at some possible trade pieces for the Philadelphia Phillies, guys that may be kept just because they're going to be traded, Guys that you may look at and say, hey, contracts up at the end of the year. We're going to dish them if they don't play well. Uh, we might have to have some tough conversations there. What happens if in a stack down at least the Phillies underachieve? Is there a chance that they're sellers? Stuff like that. Oh, we're going to be looking way down the line. But stuff that's interesting as we get really geared up for the season. Because you know in season, a lot of it is what's game recap and talking about what happened the night before. There's 162 games in like 190-some days. So, yeah, you're going to have a lot of days where it's simply game recap and we don't get a chance to take a huge overlook at the stories of the year. So that's what this is going to be as spring training goes on. Uh, team awards predictions. This is a good idea that someone had in the meeting. Team awards prediction. Is there an MVP on this Philadelphia Phillies team? Is there a Cy Young on this Phillies team? Is there a rookie of the year potentially on this Phillies team? There's all kinds of interesting yearly awards. Is Rob Thompson going to win manager of the year? All this great stuff that we could get into as far as awards, uh, projections, first team, all MLB, everything like that. Gold gloves, great. We're going to discuss that at length uh, as we go through. We'll do a couple episodes on that. And finally, a projection breakdown. Now, as we get closer and closer to the season, there's not as many out there now because you don't even know who's on the roster yet. You don't know what's going to happen through spring training. So we'll see as they come out. But you have betting lines already. Our friends at FanDuel have betting lines on win totals and everything like that. And then there's going to be a bunch of national and local reporters who come out with their projections. I think the Phillies win 86 games. I think the Phillies win 90 games. I think the Phillies win 97 games. And uh, we'll go through some of those as they come out and ones that pique my interest. Or they may be projections for players or maybe news for players. So all of that stuff is going to be broken down so we can prime you up for the Philadelphia Phillies 2023 season. It's our spring training too. So this is while the players are getting their batting practice in, throwing their live bullpens and doing their light inner squads and starting to play other teams, our spring training is going to be that. That's our workout regimen. That's what I just laid out for you. It's going to be a very fun spring training for the Philadelphia Phillies and a very exciting one as we ramp up to the 2023 season. Now, coming up, we're going to jump into our first one of those. And it's going to start with 
the major storylines. I'm going to break down the biggest storyline of the 2023 season coming up next as we prime you to get ready for Philly spring training pitchers and catchers reporting in just two We'll, we'll call it two days. Call it two days, right? Don't don't be giving me this. Oh, it's actually technically three. Call it two days. We all know what it means. All right? We'll talk about it next. All right, let me tell you about my friends over at FanDuel, our presenting sponsor for today's episode. It's the midway point of the NBA season. It's here. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure. It's super easy to use. You can bet on everything. Money line, point scorers, threes made, all that good stuff. Check out uh, your Philadelphia 76ers and the prop bets you got going on with them and everything like that. I mean, there are some great props for Embiid, Harden, uh, point scored. You know, Embiid is one of the best point scorers in the NBA, like rebounds, assists. Uh, Tyrese Maxey's been heating up lately. A lot of great money to be earned here. If you were a four for four Philly fan, you follow the Sixers. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports bet, sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, let's talk the biggest storyline of the 2023 season. You all know what it is. There's no doubt in my mind that this is the biggest thing. Because it is the biggest thing. It's the only thing. It's the ultimate goal. The biggest storyline of the 2023 season is can the Philadelphia Phillies win the World Series. That's it. That's what it starts with. That's what it ends with. Welcome to the championship contention window. They were in it last year, and we didn't really know that they were there, but I told you all year the talent was there. There's no doubt now. This team is better. And by the time we get halfway through the season, this may come true. We may be saying that they're significantly better than the 2022 team that won the National League pennant, that went to the World Series, that came within two games of winning it. Yeah, they're really, really, really good. And they've got a lot of obstacles in their way. Will Rob Thompson, in his second year, well, not even his second year, but his first full year as manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, be able to replicate what he did when he took over for Joe Girardi? And these are ancillary storylines that go into that ultimate one. How does the division stack up? The Braves are still really good. The Mets are still really good. The Marlins are improved. The Nationals, eh, I don't know what they're even doing down there in D.C., but they're around, but you play them less. Every division game matters more in a tight division. How does that affect you? The National League is really tough. There are some talented teams out there. The Padres reloaded. The Cardinals are still good. The Dodgers are always going to be competitive. Uh, you look at this and you say, okay, well, there might be six or seven World Series contenders coming out of the National League this year, and you got to find a way to be better than all of them if you even want to make it to the World Series. And then you're going to get a look at some really good American League teams with the Astros still in their window and the Yankees reloading and bringing back Aaron Judge and everything going on with the American League East, the young upstart Toronto Blue Jays, the Texas Rangers going and getting DeGrom and trying to make a push for relevancy down there in the Lone Star State. You look at the West Coast, can the Angels finally put it together with two of the best players in baseball and Mike Trout and Shohei Otani? What's going on with, like, ah, it's awesome. This MLB season is so great with storylines and everything like that. And the Philadelphia Phillies, main goal – it's not like one of those teams like the Marlins, like can we compete for maybe making it into the playoffs or finding a wild card spot or uh, how does this individual player go? No, this is a team storyline. This is the biggest storyline that encompasses everything. Can this Philadelphia Phillies team win the World Series? As of today, the answer is a resounding yes. They are talented enough to. They have been there before. They now have the pedigree. I know it's crazy to say because it's been a decade since we've been able to say it, but this team has a championship-level pedigree. I mean, they won something last year. They won the National League. Uh, they didn't win the division. They didn't win the World Series, but they won the NL pennant, and that's big. Only two teams do that every year when you talk about winning a pennant, and that creates success, and that creates confidence, and that creates winning players, and that creates young players who – build up and I guess uh, what is the word I'm looking for? They progress, they grow. They're, 
their outlook, their projections go out the window when you give them World Series level experience. They progress through their careers and they uh, increase their skill levels faster uh, a lot of times because they've played in high pressure situations. Like when you've played in the World Series against the Houston Astros, playing a Saturday game against the Oakland Athletics in the regular season feels like cake. You could be down three and have a big at bat coming up with the bases loaded. And you know what they're saying? Uh, not as big as that at bat I had against whoever in the playoffs last year. No pressure. And it's not totally the case. It's not 100% of the time, but your team becomes better. Think about it because it's honestly kind of how it is. Think about how when you play a video game and you're trying to upgrade your character, right? If you play more games, you get more experience points to spend on making your characters better. The Phillies got a whole heap load of experience points last year by advancing through the playoffs and going to the World Series and everything. So, yes, they're going to be even better this year than they were last year. Skill level wise doesn't mean their record's going to end up being better. It should be. doesn't mean they're going to progress as far as they did last year. I'd like it if they did. But, yes, this is another exciting year for the Philadelphia Phillies. And they've got some big-name players that will help them get there, some new arms in the bullpen. Trey Turner, what does he look like? That's another thing we're going to have to break down. Like, what are some accurate projections for Trey Turner for the 2023 season? Because he's going to have to carry this team. What's the Bryce Harper injury have to do? Are we sitting here in June, July saying, man, Bryce Harper being out this long really killed the team's chances of contending for an NL East championship? Maybe he's coming back to a team that's seven or eight games up in the National League East by the time he comes back around the All-Star break. There's This team is capable of – just about any level of success. Well, no, of any level of success. This team could win 100 games. This team could win 105 games. Uh, I don't think they're going to. And later on in spring training, we'll get to my projection for their win total and everything, which, by the way, last year, I don't know if you know about this, but uh, I, predict, I predicted the Phillies were going to win 87 games, and they won 87 on the nose. So I hit it last season on the number. So I'll tell you, I already have an idea of where I think this team is um, wins-wise now, but I'll save that for a later show as we get later on into spring training. But, but yeah, I think they're talented enough to – there's a universe out there where this team wins 100 games. And we're not saying, oh, my goodness, how did this happen? But there's also a universe where this team wins 80-some games and they sneak in as a wild card again. I think they are a playoff team, but their sights are set so much higher than that. So, yes – the number one storyline for the Philadelphia Phillies in 2023 is, is this team good enough to win a World Series? I think they are. But every storyline from here on out that we're going to get into and every piece of content has that question as its ethos. And how do those smaller storylines and those secondary and tertiary storylines build up to our answer of the big question? Can this team win the World Series? Because right now, it sure looks like they can it's going to be a real fun season. Man, I'm getting excited just talking about it. Got a long way to go. Pitchers and catchers aren't even there yet, but that's what we're going to get into as we continue through spring training. Coming up, though, it is Valentine's Day. It's a holiday. I already wish you happy Valentine's Day. I will again, though, and I want to talk about the Mount Rushmore of my favorite Phillies that I've ever loved, my, like my most lovable Phillies, my favorite players ever. So on Valentine's Day, that's what I want to share with you. And in the comments on the YouTube section coming up, I want you to share with me your most beloved Philly for you personally. Or you could say, hey, I didn't really like this guy or I like a lot of the players, but the most beloved by the fan base was this guy or that guy, this pitcher, that hitter. Uh, you, you get the drill. I'll give you my top four on Mount Rushmore coming up as we wrap up Lock on Phillies. All right, first, though, let me tell you about my friends over at Built Bar because I know you're looking for a really delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories. You got to try a Built Bar. Listen, the weather in Philadelphia right now is unbelievable. It's like 60 degrees today. We had like two 60-degree days last week. It's going to be like 67 later this week. You know what that means? Beach season's coming faster than you think it is. You got to be ready to get out there for the summer. You got to be ready to rock the t-shirts and the tank tops and the shorts and everything. You got to be in good shape. You know what this also is? It's the time of the year where it still gets dark at 530 here in the Northeast. Then you still have days where you're sitting on the couch like, man, we are having one of those cold days. I know it's going to be warm soon, but I don't want to go outside and I don't want to exercise or I've had a long day. And it's already dark out. I just want to sit there with a candy bar and go ahead and stuff my face and uh, eat my sorrows away with the Eagles losing the Super Bowl. Well, here's what you can do. 
you can find the happy medium. Built Bars are made with 100% real chocolate. They taste just like one of those delicious candy bars, but listen to these numbers. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein. They're great for you. They're great to help you get in shape for the summer. Some great flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. Easy to grab, too. They're at your Walmart in the pharmacy section. They're at Sam's Club in a 13-bar box. You can get them in bulk. You can find them everywhere. I can't say enough good things about Built Bar. I have them after my workout a couple times a week. They taste amazing. They work amazingly. And uh, you got to check them out. Take my word for it. Built Bar is your ultimate snack as you get ready. Well, ultimate protein bar as well. Snack and protein bar in one as you get ready for the summer months. All right. On Valentine's Day, my Mount Rushmore, my most beloved Philadelphia Phillies of all time. By me personally. This is mine personally, okay? So you got to go ahead and bear with me. Don't be saying, like, oh, how's... The fan base didn't like this guy or the fan base. This is for me. If you want to, when you comment on the YouTube or tweet at me at LO underscore Phillies or at Connor Thomas 975, you can go ahead and tweet me what you think. But it's just my personal list. So, of course, on there has to be my favorite Philly of all time, Roy Halladay. Roy Halladay has got to be on there. Loved Roy Halladay. He's who I modeled myself after as a pitcher. Wanted to be just like Roy. Uh, must watch every time he made a start unbelievable. Still, for me, the best pitcher I've ever seen play for the Philadelphia Phillies in my lifetime. I know, uh, of course, there have been other Hall of Famers and everything. Steve Carlton's amazing, all that good stuff. He, he's number one for me. Maybe Andrew Painter will take over that spot. But right now, it's Roy Halladay. Number two, and not just in particular order, but these are my top four. Chase Utley has you know, got to be up there. The way he just... Chase Utley is the guy, to me, baseball-wise, and... Maybe more so than like there are a couple guys in my childhood in this city that really introduced me to the Philly athlete, the tough, quiet, take care of business, but don't cause problems off the field or don't do anything off the field. Like literally, you don't hear anything about them off the field. You know, on the field, they're zoned in. They produce. They go about their business. They make the tough plays. They put in the hard work. And that's the Philly athlete. That's who resounds with this fan base. Chase Utley was that guy on the baseball diamond. Dawkins was that guy on the football field. Uh, AI was that guy on the basketball court. Never really was a big hockey guy. But, I mean, yeah, it, uh, like, this is the quintessential Philadelphia athlete. And it's the guy I grew up with. And the city loved him, and I loved him. Chase has got to be there. You know what? I don't know that – and the reason I picked Chase over Jimmy Rollins, because I don't think I could put Jimmy Rollins in my top four, even though he's up there. Jimmy Rollins almost looked too good at baseball. It's crazy to say. But, like, Chase Utley made the hard plays look easy. And he was a guy that I looked at the way he – the style he played. It was kind of like, oh, man, maybe I could do that one day. Jimmy was a guy that was just like, this dude is different. That man can make unbelievable plays. He can run like the wind. He can hit for averages I could never dream of getting to. He's an MVP. Like He's a guy that I couldn't possibly hope to play the game like Jimmy Rollins. He was special at shortstop. Not, not saying he was a better player. He was a different kind of player than Chase. They were a great double play combo. But for me, I always just uh, – Chase Utley seemed like a more attainable goal for me as a kid. And uh, Jimmy seemed almost like a superhuman. So that's that's why I go Chase Utley over Jimmy Rollins. But they're certainly on there. There's another guy from that 2008 core that's also absolutely got to be on here. I'm putting Ryan Howard on as well. So and you're saying Chase and Ryan, but no Jimmy? I, I don't know. See, Jimmy Rollins was a guy who was not a big dude. So, right, when you look at him, you look at him as something. While I just said Jimmy Rollins was not an attainable type of player to me when I looked at uh, – who I could be like as a kid, wanted to model my baseball career after. He was still a guy who was my size. I'm like, okay, he's my size and he does all this stuff clearly different. That man's just built different. But then there's guys who are literally built different to the point where you're envious of them. Like, oh, if I was that big, maybe I could do that. And Ryan Howard is that dude. Everybody loves home runs. And as a kid, I never watched anybody hit home runs the way I watched Ryan Howard for the 2006 and seven and eight and nine, like for those teams. It, the sweet lefty swing. He also had such like the, the arm up, fix the sleeve, swing it back down. Like the replicatable swing that you want to mirror that all the kids in Philadelphia were trying to do, whether you're a righty or a lefty. 
the big piece absolutely on there. So right now we got Halliday, we got Chase Utley, and we got Ryan Howard, the big piece. And my fourth one, Jamie Moyer. Yes. Why Jamie Moyer? <laughs> you, you're noticing something. It's guys that I can either think I could be like one day, want to be like one day, or am like. And Jamie Moyer fits in that last category. Never threw hard. Never really had velocity. The, the hardest pitch I probably ever threw in my life was 82 or 83 miles an hour. Like, I never really threw hard at the collegiate level, the high school level. The only time, like, the last time I was considered to throw hard was probably when I was like 12 years old. So, yeah, I, I never really just progressed velocity wise. And I watched a guy in Jamie Moore throw like low 80s at the major league level and dominate people and have a long career, a fringe Hall of Fame career. And Jamie Moore, when you look at the stats he compiled over the course of his really, really long career. So, yes, before there was Roy, there was Jamie Moyer. And I was like, I could be that guy one day. Yeah, clearly I couldn't. I only played Division three baseball and then a little semi-pro ball after school. But, yeah, I wanted to be like Jamie Moore. And I loved watching him start because he gave hope to all the kids out there who didn't throw 99 or 100. Like, yes, I loved watching Jamie Moore. So those are my four most Beloved Phillies of all time. There are other guys that are close to making the list. Carlos Ruiz, Shane Victorino, uh, Jason Worth, guys like that uh, for sure. Guys on this team now, like Bryce Harper is certainly in the conversation. But now I'm a grown man, and Bryce Harper is it, – it's different. The the love you have for players when you were young and growing up is different than the love you have for players when you're in your late 20s. So – Different, but hey, you can make the argument for anybody. I'd love to hear who your most beloved Phillies of all time are on Valentine's Day. To wish them a happy Valentine's Day. I love all of you out there who take your time to listen to Locked On Phillies every day. I want to thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Now make your next listen Locked On MLB Prospects. We just did a great crossover with them. Go ahead and check it out. Me and Lindsey Crosby shot the breeze, and we talked about some Phillies prospects, and he's got some great insight on prospects from Man, all the way from not having to play, not having played even minor league ball yet. Guys who are playing overseas that are coming over, playing down the Caribbean that are coming up this year for the first time. He knows everything. So go ahead and listen to Lindsey Crosby. does great work over there. That's all for Locked On Phillies. One more time, happy Valentine's Day and looking forward. We're one day closer to pitchers and catchers reporting.